can eliminating the end gap on a diesel piston ring change the performance of the engine? We're here at Waggler Competition Engines in Odin, Indiana to find the answer. Let's go inside and get started. So this is Jeremy Waggler. You are like the man when it comes to high power diesel engines. So what is, what, what we got here? This is uh, testing one of the Waggler Street Fighter 6.7s. Basically it's uh, 2019 plus and we've done some modifications for lifter failures. We're working on testing the rings, doing some uh, turbo testing, basically crankcase pressure and flow with a JTEC system. So we're gonna see what the rings, what your rings are actually doing. Cause that's the whole thing. We can say, yeah. all right, maybe there's some horsepower, this or that, but we have to have data so explain a little bit about what data we're going to be able to collect from this engine in doing the back-to-back -back test of the conventional gap ring versus the gapless second ring in this engine. So basically starting off right now that we have a conventional ring in it. So we're going to start mm -hmm. it off and trying to do like three different power levels. So okay. more, more fuel, more boost, and then see what the actual crankcase is relieving out of, the, out of the engine. So the more power, the more boost, the more we're going to see getting vented from the crankcase. Right, yeah, more yeah. blow by, we put more so, power, more blow by, and we'll be able to see if there's any kind of a delta between yep. the conventional gap ring and the gapless ring. So that's gonna let us what the engine's gonna tell us what yep. it's seeing from the dyno. Yep, and we're using SNS with the MoTeC system to be able to show everyone the power ranges, the fuel, the boost, all the curves all in one uh, schematic. So Perfect. basically, so you can see the fuel, data. boost, power and blow by. Yep, data is everything. So we're trying to get, get all that pulled together. And after we get done testing, hopefully we can learn which ring's the best for our applications. So, right, we're, yep. we're really curious because oh, yeah. we've never done this back to back ourselves before. We have customers that have told us they've seen incredible yep. things, but you know, I, I'm not from we, Missouri, but you would probably think I was because <laughs> I'm all about show me. Yeah. I want to see the data myself and be here hands on. And in the diesel world, in our drag racing and pulling world, and SNS can also tell you as well, most guys are only monitoring pressure. But when you ask which customer, what are they running for a vent out of the valve cover? Everybody has a different size. Some mm -hmm. of them have two vents. Some of them have one vent. So basically, that you makes can't, a giant difference. You can't compare one engine to the other. Basically, they're looking for is it increasing or decreasing over a pass or 20 passes or right. 30 passes? So hopefully we get guys talked into putting the JTEC flow meter on as well to be able to tell when is that ring failing, when is the piston getting ready to melt down mm -hmm. instead of costing an engine failure. Hopefully we can get guys to show this data and then go from there. So, so you want to catch it in the front side before if you can. It, yeah, before it gets expensive. Speaking so. of that, one of the things we're also going to do is take oil samples. Okay. So that we can analyze the used oil, compare it to the fresh oil, because we want to see not only does having a gapless ring, does it reduce the amount of blow by, does it increase boost Fuel. and do that, Fuel dilution. Fuel dilution in it. Because okay. fuel dilution is the main enemy of your oil. That's what makes your oil go bad. And from these engines, it's soot and fuel dilution. So yeah. we want to see, are we not only reducing the amount of blow by, are we helping it seal up better, but also are we protecting our oil as well? Okay. And so, we're using a standard 1540, like a Rotella T oil. So perfect. it's just a standard off the shelf oil on this, on this test. Cool. So, so we'll take use samples of both the conventional gap and the gapless and we can compare it to the fresh oil. So we have lots of data at the end of the video. So stay tuned so we can show you what we find out. When we loaded it, it was a 1,050 when I held it. I held it for turbo spool up, and then basically it, it comes down, and during the pass, it's right at a 1,000 1, foot-pounds of torque, and then 517 starts climbing up up here, about 32 is when it crosses over 600 horse and 990 torque. Pretty flat line. Mm -hmm. And then all the way up to 
starts to drop down on torque up here above 3,800, but it's 900 foot-pounds of torque and 600, and it was 680, I think, right at the end, 678. foot-pounds over 900 horsepower dude that was crazy That's, yep 955 uh, horsepower and 1500 foot-pounds of torque and we're being pretty conservative with fuel yet it's 300 cubes of fuel that's conservative yeah okay right now right now <laughs> <laughs> but we want to make sure we have all the testing the same so it's 300 cubes of fuel the same turbo the same injectors pump everything is exactly the same so, so all we're gonna do now is take it apart and yep. just swap the second ring yep uh, right now we're seeing around 9 cfm through the jtec through the blow by and less than one pound so i think it was 0. 0.6 pounds of pressure with the dash 12 line going to it as far as that i think we're ready to swap rings and tear things down all right sounds good let's get to it Three hours later, it's rebuilt. Let's fire it up. Wow, that was a lot of work yesterday, and my mind was blown. Not just, this thing's a stock block, did you say? Stock 2019, so yeah, it's a- And it made 1,600? 1,650 torque and 944 horsepower. So 
makes it. There was one it, run that was like good. over a thousand though. Or, yeah, 1,044. Sorry. Yeah, 1,044. 1,044. Yeah. yeah. So, Don't want to undersell it by yeah. 100. <laughs> Basically, our goal was we knew our limiting factor was the 10 mil SNS pump okay. is usually around 900 ish engine dyno horsepower mm -hmm. and then 100% over injectors. But the pump definitely. That we was, was a limit. We was plateauing out last night at 1,040. Fuel pressure dropping, and that yes. was not a good sign. <laughs> yep. But Andre, Andre done a good job on tuning and got it all dialed in. And I feel like we did our steps of procedure. You know, we started off at 300 and some horsepower, mm -hmm. so that'd be like a factory engine power level, all the way up to like five different levels, all the way up to over a thousand. So we hammered on it. We yeah, beat we it up. Yeah. So what do you think about those gapless rings? Uh, basically what we're seeing with the JTEC flow meter, that was a very good test. Flow meter showed half the flow with the gapless over the conventional. So right. I feel like, I mean. Went from like around like yeah. 11 CFM peak yep. to like five and a half CFM yep. peak. And and it was an instant same fuel. change. Yeah, instant change as soon as we, we pulled the head off head off in the middle of the afternoon, pan off, pulled the pistons out, you gap the rings for us right back together. I felt like it was one of the best back-to-back -back tests. And then yeah. eight to 10 horsepower was yeah. like the curve, eight to 10 horsepower gain. So it's not like crazy horsepower, but you look at it, especially in our world, if you're looking for a 10 horsepower gain on a smaller class, turbo class, it's definitely worth it. But for street driving and all that, it's keeping the it's keeping the diesel out of the oil, so. Oh yeah, and that, the, we, we can see that. I mean, a couple of things I kind of noticed was that while the the boost was pretty much the same once we got up on RPM, yep. coming up when you were making the partial throttle run, yeah. it was actually coming up to higher boost before the run before started. The yep. So it's like, okay, it, a little it's less driving. turbo lag, uh, which was nice. But then, like you said, the oil, yep. that was the big thing, is that when we finished the conventional baseline testing, I mean, the oil was basically black from almost the word go. We kept checking at every pass and it stayed like clear. Yeah, yeah it so. finally started to change. We finally had those last couple of three runs where we had the most fuel. I think the, I think the biggest thing that we'll see, and when you get back to the labs, we've seen all the visual, mm -hmm. the visual differences, but I think when you get back to the labs, you'll see what the lab results Right, because the lab that, can so. tell us how much fuel is in the oil and how much soot yep. is in the oil. So we'll have that comparison of the baseline oil, conventional gap, and the gapless. It's the same oil, we can both have that. And yeah, hang, hang on, stay tuned to the video because we'll show you those results here on the same video. So that's the beautiful thing about editing, right? We're, yep. <laughs> we're testing the day, the lab will be done with its results in a few days, but you get it all at once. Yep. You don't have to wait. But as far as that, we started and ran all the tests. I think we probably, we'd have to check on the dyno, but I bet we pay it, put 40 passes or more on it. But impressive to be able to see a stock engine power level all the way up to 1,000, 1,100, you know, 1,044 horsepower, I feel like. We did all the testing the, right the same as what you would see a driven truck down the road and a performance truck. So, so um, if someone wants one of these, yep. how, how do they get a hold of you? How, how does someone come about getting one of these? Basically, the easiest thing to do is call the shop 812-636-0391 or get on the website and send us a message. So yeah, we have parts and pieces for all these engines, all the the hot rod parts and stock parts. So That's but, cool. We love testing and I'm glad you guys came to help us and JTEC guys helped us out because without proper equipment, we wouldn't know where we was at on flow. And then Andre with SNS was able to put it on the laptop and basically monitor and pressure off of this port and flow off of this port. So I feel like we got a really accurate across the board reading all week. So. Right, that's what our whole mantra is. We like science not speculation yeah and this is what was awesome we can't thank you enough for uh putting all the time and effort into being able to quantify the results and do real dyno testing so that we can provide you with information you can trust <laughs>